So thanks for being here with us again. Uh, we are going to be talking with Michael Houston, Voices of the Street, as we continue along in our show, which is up today, all about sharing our stories. The arts are the answer for helping us understand each other, helping us understand ourselves a lot better, and with any luck, making some difference in the world. And nobody's making more of a difference right now than, than Michael Houston out there helping people who are homeless right now, nevertheless, despite their circumstances, have an opportunity to tell their story as they move through their process and, and, and get through the day, the week, and whatever else they have to face. So Michael, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having us. <laughs> <laughs> so for people who don't know Michael Houston, uh, he has been the board president of the Arts Council for Monterey County, and, and there helped us all really understand that, uh, who all is actually here in Monterey County and helping us move ahead quite a bit um, in serving, ab actually serving everyone. And, um, and Michael, you've been a teacher and for a good long... 30 years, good retired. Long years, 30, retired. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and, uh, and so engaged in the community in so many ways, and as well as a great raconteur yourself and musician as well. Um, so let's talk about uh, how in the world did you get, with all of that that you have going on all this time, how did you get involved in the Voices of the Street? Well, after I retired from the Alisal Union School District, mm -hmm. my, our friend Arlene Krebs got me a job as a technology teacher. I've been a technology uh, mentor, okay. so I was a bilingual teacher at the Chinatown Learning Center. Arlene is somehow at the heart of a lot of great things around here. She was right here. <laughs> to make good things happen for yeah. a lot of good things. Yeah. And it tied up to our, our friends over at Lowe's Fishes and Computers. I see. Oh, okay. And because the core of my newspaper crew were doing a thing called Chinatown Computers. Oh, and so they were refurbishing yeah, computers. They had this sort of technology. Yeah. And they they had a silk screen business. They were working with uh, Dorothy's right, Place. I remember that. And the, uh, so we were the, the next stage of a, of a co-op movement. Wow. And this wonderful guy, Robert Mills, who was a Franciscan lay friar or something, yeah. this Chinese-American spiritualist who was with us for the first two editions and then headed off to Wisconsin and his, his diabetes made oh. life hellish. His legs couldn't really walk and yet here he was in the homeless world. So he, but he you know, made it, gave us a, a beautiful gift right there. It's, wonderful. And this is really a, a, the story of uh, it's, it's a lot like Mac and the Boys, where a bunch of pals yeah. get together, and you know, diverse race, religion, background, whatever, yeah. and we want, and we want to. I mean, this, we're storytellers, so yeah. we all want to tell our story, and different ones have different ways of going about it. Uh, our first published book was yeah. by uh, Tom Patton. Mm -hmm. Tom had been imprisoned, oh, in yeah. he was a, he was an international banker. Wow. And he was, he, according to him, he was one of, uh, one of the golden dozen. Yeah. These are the, the top 12 uh, con artists on earth, wow. very much on, on the uh, FBI's uh, list. So he was, our, he was a wonderful uh, columnist for our story yeah. in which he sort of did the inside of uh, Chinatown and his own ramblings about his, his own life and career. So he found a lot of fulfillment with us mm -hmm. and got his book finished. Isn't that and amazing? And it's, it's a really sad story in a way. Yeah. Because it, in his uh, later 70s, he's still um, doing illicit drugs and throwing parties and getting oh, kicked yeah. out of flop houses wow. and getting shaken down out of his tent on the streets yeah. and just dynamically engaged in life. But <laughs> unfortunately, his income was low. Sure. So he'd, he'd, if he could get himself into a motel, he only had $900 and at $50 a day, yeah. plus his other um, expenses, yeah. he'd end up at Natividad. So yeah, eventually he did get uh, assisted living. Uh -huh. And so he got his uh, he got his glasses. He was he would just use readers and see everything yeah. kind of foggy. Yeah. And he got his teeth done, wow. and he ha was getting regular meals. So um, he died because I mean, <laughs> what had kept him alive was the struggle to keep on going, and that was you know that supplied him with a lot of purpose. So you can get his book on Amazon, oh, and great. he's uh, he he portrays himself as a really noble figure, and he's chained in St. John's. In, off our Antigua Barbados area yeah. to a, a, a slave cell and he's the only white guy in the prison. So his book about how he was set up by a con man wow. and busted for passing bad checks and then doing time till his hunger strike and his noble speech from the dock frees him. So the, the, uh, the Voice of the Street has got, got help from the Arts Council 
we wanted to educate people about mm -hmm. you know what kind of stories are out there. Right. And people, everybody's got stories. Yeah. So our crew, we had Eugene Begay was had been uh, he'd been roller skating across America to end AIDS and homelessness. Mm -hmm. So Eugene was, was our, our our health journalist, and he was very, his, his had a great story in which he's at a a, a, a care provider's. I mean, this is him with in, his, in the China Street Garden with his oh, uh, jujube yeah. uh, berries, which yeah. will give you a long, healthy life. And, just, <laughs> and he was wondering, you know, who was stealing from him. Oh, no. found it, and then the, the bushes started coming up everywhere, and he realized the birds had got to them. <laughs> so he was, he, was, he was going to become the Johnny Appleseed <laughs> of jujube berries. <laughs> and doing it, and his, so he, his other battle was against obesity. Uh -huh. He was at a nice meeting for care providers. And they said, you know, there's no way you can save junkies. And he gets up and says, I am obese myself, but I believe with the change of consciousness, I can deal with this. Mm -hmm. And that the other chair providers who were um, obese as well <laughs> were aware that he was being a little bit uh, humorous uh, at their expense, yeah. <laughs> to say the least. But again, you know, he really believed in this. And this, the, uh, the, one of the odd things about Boards of the Street is, when in the most circuitous route imaginable, we get people housed. Eugene yeah, and, so and his friend Van were living in trucks, which got towed. This is the most yeah. amazing part. Yeah. So, so all right. So let's just start with Eugene. Tell right. tell the story again. So, it's, well, he's roller he's roller skating across America. Yeah. And his truck breaks down in San Diego, so they put a new motor in for him, but it doesn't have a catalytic converter. Uh -huh. So eventually, when he's towed in Chinatown, having worked on the uh, the Old Town Salinas, uh, you know, board, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. improvement board sure, that's sure. representing Chinatown with, yeah. with his friend Van and setting up Chinatown computers. Then he had a war room, which was in the, uh, it made, he created a classroom in a garage because he actually owned a house oh, he in did. Pennsylvania, oh, but okay. he, want, he didn't want to use it up. He wanted to leave it to his daughter. Yeah, yeah. So he was, and he'd, he'd been to one of these uh, life-saving, life-changing sort of courses, and he thought his mission was to roller skate across America <laughs> until he got to Monterey with the hernia. Uh, so the war room deteriorated into yeah. its living quarters after his truck was towed and he couldn't get it back and couldn't get a catalytic con converter on it. So his, he was, uh, I intervened to, uh, he was supposed to come to a, a staff meeting for the, uh, the paper. Uh -huh. And so he comes and comes. We go back uh. to his storage at, uh, over off Wood Street and he can't, he's managed to get himself outside the, the giant steel grate, uh -huh. but he can't stand up. Oh my gosh, wow. So I said, you know, and so Van and I, and Van, reasonably good sized human beings, but we, yeah. can't, we can't get him off the ground. Wow. And he's, uh, his, his legs weren't very useful. Yeah, yeah. So I tell him I'm going to call the fire department. Yeah. And he goes, it's just a waste of time. They'll just take me to the Nativity, they'll check me out, then they'll, 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 you know, rehydrate me and throw me out again. And I thought, no, that's impossible. They, you, know, you're just, you can't even stand up. They can't do that. Yeah. So they did. Uh, Fire department came. They checked his, made sure his, his feet worked and his, uh -huh. you know, got up and Fire hauled him see. off. And then they let him go. But he pulled, the, the same thing happened to him within, a, when, within days. So his, his truck's gone. He's calls the fire department. This time he, exp he gets section eight or he gets, he gets a housing voucher off okay. a social worker. Uh -huh. and, they, and so he gets a few days in a hotel, okay. gets himself an airplane ticket and flies himself back to Pennsylvania and his wow. daughter and he's living with her and has been housed <laughs> okay. ever since. And he's looked in on by our friend uh, Bill Black, who's another housing activist. Uh, and so it's, I mean, this is a story about support people. Yeah. You know, we're pals and we try to watch out for each other. That and is this is, so, this is what we, so Eugene is, so is back amazing. in Pennsylvania. Van is assisting a disabled person. So he's housed now. Do you find that when people start to uh, get engaged with that work, with, when they start to tell their stories, that they are thereby really re-engaging with the world? And then that kind of helps them to potentially at least re-engage with their family and their maybe their friends or something where it makes it easier for them to get help. Does that usually happen or often or sometimes? That is the most beautiful story I've ever heard. <laughs> it it doesn't doesn't like everything yeah. else. Uh, I think this brings us up to Rosa uh, Elena Spinoza, okay. our poet, and she was yeah. she was our poet for the the newspaper from you know very early that, on. That's what I remember. So she goes to Hartnell. Yeah. She uh, she's 
I, I think of Steve uh, McShane as a, a very solid, responsible, conservative Republican representing the city on the, uh, on the city council. And Steve McShane just loves everything about Rosalina, the social activist, the migrant, the, 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 the person who helps other yeah. people get their services, That's who gets bullied yeah. for being an immigrant by mean people, who <laughs> keeps going on, who participates each year at uh, Noche Bohemia. Oh, yeah. And she's, you know, and, I mean, all these people end up participating in other activities, though we, they do in, engage our, our so staff that, photographers that's what I mean. in you, it. You, you kind of, well, through, through the work that you're all doing, you're also just getting people to kind of really s start again. Like, maybe they don't have that catalytic converter, maybe they don't have everything that they need, but they start to connect with you, they start to remember things that are important to them and have a chance to, to um, Start, start moving again, really. It's, it, we're, we're, Internally. It, it's, we're, I'm so fortunate that we ran such an exploitive organization. We didn't give people <laughs> money. We gave them newspapers to sell. And oh, yeah. Nobody wanted to sell newspapers. Nobody oh, yeah. wanted to be shaken you're, down by you're the really cops. <laughs> well, it was, you know, but other people were only too happy to get, you know, Michael Miller, the so concrete contractor. Yeah. You know, him, psh, that's a good cause. Our, our Ed Leeper, liquid, our liquid books. Yes. Yeah patron saint of, of literacy yeah, in yeah. Honoré County, he would give hard cash. The guy was living on a tight income, but he, you know, so people were ready to help out. And with regard to uh, Rosalina, when we moved on with it, we still got the paper going, yeah. we started publishing on Amazon. So Rosa has now hooked up with her brother, who's a painter, for her, her for, will be her third book, and she's working on her autobiography. She's hooked wow. up with her son, who's helping her with the oh translations. Gosh. She's now reviving the one that, that where I was a translator, and she doesn't like she says she doesn't like her text. I think she doesn't like my rather <laughs> loose version of, of what I thought she was saying because oh. that some of the grammar was hard to follow in Spanish or English, or to let you less translate to English. So the people do hook, hook up. Uh, Red, uh, Red, Red McCall, wonderful guy. So he's become our staff photographer. Oh, right. And these, this, this crew, the Voices crew, goes to first night yeah. with Ellen Martin, and she was terrified to have a, you know, a homeless people as part of her organization, the face of her so organization. So what did you all we're the do? Meet, we're the photography, one of the photography crews. So okay. we, we hook up with the, the oh, Amp I Producers yeah, Club, yeah, yeah. and the Amp Producers Club do not discriminate against homeless people yeah. who like to do video. In fact, they just, you do, ah, they just love to chat away, and they're everybody's, everybody's got stories. Yeah. And so, you know, our editor, Van Gresham, he's, uh, he's, out, he's talking to everybody all through the first night event and getting mm -hmm. great informal photos that you know, first night can put up on its website. Yeah. And we're, we're shooting the videos of the performances, we're spread out all over. You know, so, and then well, our friend uh, Linda Heverin yeah. works in, a lot of people are aware that in Monterey there's a youth center by Dennis the Menace Park and it's a dance studio <laughs> right. and there's another youth center <laughs> in Salinas. Turns out. And it's a lockdown. And, yeah. with, and the, the, the American schizophrenia over young Criminals, young. Well, we should nurture them. Criminals, we should punish them. Yeah. So there's not a lot of rehabilitation being done, but Linda does with this mural project. Yeah. So I've got our photographer, Dredd, the Afro-American um, art veteran, and Van, the North Carolina uh, former, former restaurant manager turned co-op uh -huh. creator. Yeah. Uh, and we're up hanging, which we're, we're hanging mm. in, the, in, in the Monterey room at the, at the county office building with Linda Heverin. And she's, they're all quite nice to each other, although yeah. McCall, Mr. McCall does not like to take orders from his friend from North Carolina. <laughs> says, you do it. <laughs> he's, in, he's getting micromanaged, standing in this big mural. And said, no, thank you. So, there's, uh, there's a, you know, so the, the paper has moved on our sponsorship. Uh -huh. uh, we, did, we, were trying, we got the Action Council to help out with the, the Living Prose nice. and Poetry Project, yeah. which is you know, done homeless books and non-homeless books, because uh -huh. this, is, th this book here is, uh, uh, is Alicia Holt, comes from a farm worker family out of Central Valley, first grade teacher uh -huh. in uh, over in Salinas, uh -huh. and she's made a Shel Silverstein book with these big beautiful photos, ah, so and it's a gas, and it's bilingual, and it's pretty, ah. so she's, you know, she's part of the crew. She's part of the group, and that's Rosa, phenomenal. You know, and so Rosalina is doing, is at, at 
Noche Bohemia. Yeah. You know, we're in Salinas, yeah. thousand, eight hundred to a thousand people. That's in Sherwood what I Hall. see every year. We're up, in, we're up in the, in the upstairs with our table, talking away, finding new poets and whatnot. So the Action Council is sponsoring us to get to keep the poetry thing alive, but it's the homeless union that is going to come through with the with the funding. Let's get it. Fight for your rights. So here it is. So. <laughs> And that, so Wes White has been collecting money, and when he found out that the paper was no longer funded, he said, oh, we'll do one. So we've got the, the people who organized the sit-in at the front of the Salina City Hall for six months last year, mm -hmm. and which was pretty much, that, was, that really put a spanner in our organization, because at that point, people, uh, some of our crew was, well, they dispersed Chinatown. Yeah. So the leadership bro was broken up. Uh -huh. And Eugene, you know, Van and Eugene were, you know, much less part of it. It's almost a new set of, of folks in there. There's a major social work project going on, uh -huh. and uh, you know, it's it, all of this. My my current thing, my my dear friend uh, Michael Jones just gave me a, a book on uh, real utopia, uh -huh. and uh, I'm gonna pull it out and really wreck your show if you don't mind. <laughs> if poor people have a problem, and they don't, it's that they don't have money, and that if you didn't have social workers and just gave people money, it turns out that they don't stop working. They work more. They get better education. Their kids are healthier. Their IQs go up because better nutrition. You function better with less stress. So this is this Utopia for Realists is so an interesting you recommend scene. that? I strongly recommend this one. And it, uh, it's very much like the one of the things that we, we think of Malcolm Gladwell. And he had a million dollar Manny, was a, a Seattle homeless man who would fall. He would drink, uh, I think, he, I think uh, Mouthwash was has enough alcohol in it, but it's really hard on your <laughs> internal organs. So he'd fall on his head and end up in the the emergency room, as yeah. Tom does, as as Eugene yeah. would. Yeah. And this costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. The state of Utah spends eleven thousand dollars housing people for a year, and they used to spend seventeen just on the on the police services, the hospital services, the ju <laughs> chasing the chasing the homeless around. Right, right. So they, Utah, conservative. <laughs> Red State is way ahead of California on that one, and then the. Uh, but they're good. There are noble things being gone, being done. You, I mean, you, what they do at Dorothy's place and feeding people. Yeah. And of course, our crew could not resist critiquing the hand that would literally feed them. <laughs> I just thought that's, or expecting them. You know, here's an income. Here's a, here's a business plan. If you provide me with social services, I should get a cut of your salary because I created your job. Oh no. You, <laughs> Listen, if we just give everybody money, I mean everybody yeah. enough, so we get, there's, there's, it is there, it pays for itself, because we go spend it. And it, you know, just the, the inequalities, so it is a hard one. So get back so to us, so the right. newspaper business yeah. is still going, we've got a new sponsor. The books are coming up. Uh -huh. the, uh, the, the, so we're, the people who, I mean, they, they have a wonderful record for housing our participants. And it was not our object, we're just, we're just a bunch of pals and friends, men, women, and children, making a newspaper, and well, that's and then we. But we did get help from unusual quarters, from the Arts Council, but also from the art world. The uh, Miss Miss uh, Bandersnatch gave donates covers, and it's we also got them from uh, Warren Chan has given us two cover photos. And and that's this, he is really a world phenomenal. class he painter. He certainly is. And this actually this is a picture of his father as a homeless man. He's, he's also stooped to using me as a homeless person as well. And actually, I'm a consultant. I could have been That's a publisher, wonderful. except publishers get to fire people. And in my world, you don't get to fire people. You just get to nurture them. Besides, right? how do you fire your friends? What, kind of, what kind of people are we? So the, uh, try to get the message out. Keep a, a cultural bent on it. So you don't know people don't want to read misery, misery stories all the time or, or just raging. So we've helped people publish books. We help people get their poetry published. Uh, it's, it's a, the, the homeless are such a cross section, and then they they need your help, and you know the, the real solution is in fact give them have give everybody money, because we can we'd all be better off. We wouldn't look down on each other so much. We'd all be healthier. We'd, we'd do, you wouldn't feel like bullying people because we're insecure about who we are. So there's uh, it's 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 been a really fun ride, and it's we've doing it since 2012. So you know we're in our fifth fifth sixth year. Well, thanks so much for go. sharing so much with us today. Um, if people want to get involved in any way, whether just to provide some funding mm -hmm. to, to keep it all going or to get involved in some other way, um, what's the best way to connect? 
Um, you could uh, email me. That's a, that's a good way. Or okay. find any of us on the or find me on the street. I, I I keep office hours on Alvarado Street most Tuesdays. At the farmers market. At the farmers market. Okay. Do, doing it. My the uh, a, a lot. There's some really, as you know, talented I musicians. I think my husband sees you there every week now. And no, so there's huh? this. <laughs> I, I do the counterplant. I I have a bunch of toy instruments for kids. Oh. They entertain me, and I get art therapy, <laughs> and I come away so happy. And awesome. they seem to have a really good time. Is there a Voices on the Street, uh, Voices of the Street, sorry, uh, dot com or dot there, org? Facebook. Or? Yeah, fa Facebook. Facebook. There you go. Yeah, Facebook.com Facebook. Facebook. slash Voices of the Street. Yeah. That, and Salinas, you know, because there, there are a few out there in the world. So the Salinas. Salinas Voices of the Street, Salinas. Yeah. Okay. And that's a way to, that's a way to help us out. And then uh, Salinas Living uh, Poetry and Prose is another Facebook Beautiful. site we okay. use. Okay. Great, great, great. These are homeless authors telling their stories and changing the world. Thank you for sharing that with us, with us today. Thank you for Thank your kindness. You. Thank you. Okay. So that's the end of our uh, segment, sharing our stories. But as you know, the arts are the answer. You can see a lot more about what the Arts Council is doing, what all of our partners throughout the county are doing um, at artsformc.org. And we hope you'll get more involved as well. Thank you.